This video is sponsored by Taskade, a real-time organization and collaboration platform. Make sure to check the description for a discount on your subscription. Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas and in this video, let's take a look at the roadmap to learn Vue.js in 2022. This video is intended to serve as a guideline for anyone who is planning to start learning Vue in the year 2022. Before we begin, let me tell you that you need to be familiar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript before starting with Vue.js. If you haven't already, make sure to check the other two learning path videos. All right, let's get started. As you might be aware, Vue.js is a progressive framework for building user interfaces. Learning Vue.js can be split into three sections. Let's begin with the first section, which is fundamentals. You need to start with the Vue CLI. Vue CLI is a command line interface tool that you can use to create a brand new Vue project with just one command in your terminal and is preferred for building medium to large scale applications. Once you have a new project, you start with the technical concepts. The first one is about single file components. They are files with .view as the extension and encompass the HTML, CSS and the JavaScript into a single file representing a portion of the user interface. Once you get familiar with the .view files, You'll need to focus on the template syntax. In Vue, directives are special attributes that you can place on HTML elements to add some functionality. You'll begin by understanding how to bind data from the JavaScript block to the HTML block. You'll learn about binding text, HTML, and binding attributes. This knowledge will help you move on to conditional rendering. How to show or hide elements based on a value using the vif, vElse and vshow directives. Next, you learn about rendering a list of elements using the v4 directive and about the key attribute when rendering a list. Next, you learn how to define methods which allow you to handle events such as click of a button. Event handling will lead you on to form handling where you learn how to manage the state of your form and submit the data on click of a button. The next topic for you to focus would be computed properties. They allow you to create data from existing sources and have the capability to automatically compute whenever the dependency changes. For example, calculating the order total whenever an item is added or removed from a shopping cart. The last topic under the fundamentals section is watchers. Watchers basically allow you to watch for specific properties and react to changes in those properties. A common use case is making API calls when a parameter changes. With the knowledge of these fundamental topics, you should be able to create small view applications. However, for larger apps, you need to be aware of the more advanced concepts. You're going to begin by understanding about the component architecture. When you have multiple components in an application, the components need to interact with each other. You learn about component props, which is data sent from the parent component down to a child component, and also about custom events, which enables a child component to send some data to the parent component. You'll then learn about the provide and inject APIs, which avoids prop drilling when data has to be sent down several levels deep in the component tree. The next topic you would encounter is slots. Slots allow a parent component to control the content that is rendered inside a child component. 
It helps you when creating layouts. When it comes to component styles, you learn about the scoped attribute which restricts the styles applied to a component and thus helps prevent styles being applied globally and gives much better control. You'll also come across interesting topics like dynamic components where view will decide which component to render and also the teleport component which can append components to DOM nodes outside the root component of your application. The teleport component is especially handy when creating modals, pop-ups and tooltips. Next, you learn how to make HTTP requests and about the component lifecycle hooks. You'll also learn about template refs which allow you to directly get hold of a DOM element. Next, you would learn about mixins, which helps you reuse logic across components. Finally, you learn about the Composition API, which was introduced in Vue 3. The Composition API replaces the Options API. For example, data is replaced by refs and reactive. The computed option is replaced by the computed function. So is the case with watchers and lifecycle hooks. The composition API basically helps you write related code together and not have them spread apart in a file. Basically an improvement when it comes to developer experience. You can also write hooks or composables, which is a replacement of mixins and helps you reuse functionality across components. Now once you're through with Vue itself, it is time to focus on the ecosystem. That is, packages which play well with Vue and help you create awesome Vue applications. So let's take a look at our third section. The first thing you need to learn is state management. You can learn about Vuex. Next, you're going to learn about routing, how to deliver different components when the user visits different URLs in the browser. The go-to package is view router. The next thing to learn is about styling your view apps. You can use something like Tailwind CSS, or if you want to quickly get up and running, you can use UI libraries like Chakra UI, Element UI, Beautify, and so on. Next, if your application has complex forms to deal with, you might want to learn Vue Formulate. When it comes to testing, you'll be learning Jest with Vue Testing Library for unit testing and Cypress for end-to-end -end testing. Apart from these categories, there are a few miscellaneous things that will definitely help you if you wish to learn. For example, Storybook, and internationalization with the Vue i18n package. If you've come this far, congratulations. You've learned the important bits in the Vue ecosystem. If you want to further move on the Vue learning path, you can learn about Gridsum for static site generation, Nuxjs for server rendered apps, and Capacitor, which works with Vue for mobile apps. So this is my take on the Vue.js roadmap for 2022. Thank you for watching and if you found the video helpful, please leave a like and share the video with your friends and colleagues.